Good morning, third graders. Today we're on page 115 of your student journal, page 115. And our objective today is, today I will learn, oh, I'm so sorry, boys and girls, I forgot my N. Learn to represent, and remember represent just means to show, so today I will learn to represent whole numbers as fractions. So today I will learn to represent whole numbers as fractions. Okay, so let's look at our vocabulary today. Here's our first one. We did this in our last two lessons. In our last two lessons, we saw how to write, when we see two holes, that means two whole circles or two over one, okay? And the denominator's one because the holes have been partitioned into only one part, and the numerator's two because I have two of them, okay? Now this is very different, and this is what we're going to be practicing mostly today. We're gonna to see how these two seem to trick people and confuse people. This one, look at, I only have one circle. It says I have two half circles, or two over two, which equals one whole circle. Now this time my denominator's two, because my whole has been partitioned into two pieces, and my numerator is two because I have two of them. So notice how they look similar and that might confuse us, but when I have a numerator and a denominator that's the same, that equals one whole, okay? I'm gonna just kind of show you one over here. So if I had a rectangle and I partitioned it into three pieces and I had all three of them, what would my fraction be? Well, it was partitioned into three pieces, so my denominator's three. I have three pieces, so my numerator's three, but don't I have one whole? So this looks different than when I have individual holes. This is not the same thing. So today we're going to see how those are kind of different and how those some will kind of confuse people. Okay, we are not going to read through these because those are kind of review vocabulary. So I'm just gonna jump in and get started showing you this. You're going to notice, boys and girls, that I'm going to use something. Um, I could be shading if I have examples, but you shouldn't need to get anything out, okay? So I might be shading, but you won't need anything out. Okay, let's look at my first example. It says, represent the whole number and fraction for each model. Okay, so they don't make it really clear that I have two separate models going on here, so I'm gonna actually just show you. I'm, I'm doing two separate problems. So I have a top and then a bottom. Okay, so on the top, I have this one circle. Okay, I have one circle. And we probably could agree right now that don't I have the whole circle? So I'm gonna put, I have one hole. Don't I have one hole right there? I have the whole circle. But what does that look like as a fraction? Well, my denominator tells me how many parts the whole was cut into or partitioned into. So this was partitioned into one, two, three, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four. So the whole was partitioned into four parts. So that's my denominator. My numerator is how many parts do I have? Well, don't I have one, two, three, four? Don't I have all the parts? So because I have all the parts, my numerator and my denominator are the same. Well, when your numerator and your denominator are the same, it's equal to one whole because you have all the parts that the whole was cut into. Okay, this is very different. Just look at the picture. How different is this? What does this fraction mean? Well, let's go to our whole number first. How many holes do I have? Don't I have one, two, three, four holes? So we could agree I have four holes, but what does that look like as a fraction? 
Well, let's look at one. How many was this partitioned into? Isn't there only one part in that whole? Yes. So my denominator is a one this time because the whole was only partitioned into one part. My numerator though is a four because I have one, two, three, four of them. Okay, so we can see how this can confuse people. When your numerator and your denominator are the same, that equals one. When you have a number over a one, that equals a whole number that's equal to this number, okay? And that's a kind of a, well, I want you to understand it, but I also want you to see the pattern behind it. Okay, let's look at our next one. This says represent the whole number and fraction shown on each number line. Okay, so again, they're giving us two problems just next to each other. So let's do our top problem. Well, this fraction right there is two. They already give it to us. It's two over two. They've already drawn it for us because here's the fraction. What does this tell us? that we had one hole, do you see the one hole there? We had one hole and they partitioned it into one, two parts. That's why the denominator's two. And the numerator's two because I have the two parts. So I have the two out of the two parts which equals one whole. But it's very different what two looks like. So here, look at, I have my whole is two, and what's my fraction? Two over one. And that's because each part, each one whole, so was only partitioned into one piece. So the whole one was only partitioned into one piece, where here the whole one was partitioned into two pieces. And I have a two this time because I have won two of the pieces. Okay, so again, it's kind of seeing that pattern when the numerator and the denominator are the same, it equals one. When you have a numerator on top of a one, it equals that as the whole number. Okay, so boys and girls, let's try some of these together. We are on page 116. We're on page 116 in your student journal. And here is our first problem. It says, Represent the whole number and fraction for each model. Okay, so let's first cut this into our two problems because they kind of put them too close together. Okay, so let's look at our top problem. So do we all agree that we only have one whole circle? We have one whole circle. So can we put a one there? Okay, it's, I have one whole pie, pie or one whole pizza, but I have one whole. Okay, but as a fraction, what would this look like? Well, the denominator is how many parts was the whole partitioned into? So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. So my whole was partitioned into six pieces. That's where my denominator comes from. My numerator is how many of the pieces do I have? Well, don't I have all six of them? I do. Okay, so six, six is equal to one because it, was cut into six pieces, but I have all six pieces, so I have the whole thing. Okay, let's look at how this is different though. Do we agree that I have one, two, three, four, five, six whole circles? Okay, but what does that look like as a fraction? Okay, well the denominator is how many parts was one cut into? So wasn't this one circle only cut into one part? There's only one part in that circle. And the numerator is how many do I have? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So if you have six ones, you have six holes. That's what that's telling me. Okay, let's look at this in a number line format. Okay, again, let's cut it into our two problems. Okay, so on the top, they tell us that we have one hole right here. And then they tell us the fraction for one whole is three thirds. But why is that, ladies and gentlemen? That's what we wanna know. Well, because that one whole was partitioned into one, two, three parts. That's where your three comes from on the denominator. 
And why do you have a three on your numerator? Because how many of the parts are shaded in? One, two, three. So three out of the three parts are shaded in, which means you have one whole. Okay, down here though, we have three holes it says, and it says our fraction is three over one. But why? Well, let's look at one hole, just one hole, not the whole number line, just one hole. Wasn't one hole only partitioned into one part? That's where your denominator one comes from. And your numerator comes from having one, two, three parts. I have three parts. But the one comes from this was only partitioned into one part. Up here, my numerator is three because I have one, two, three parts, but my denominator is three because my one was partitioned into three parts. Okay? Okay, so again, ladies and gentlemen, you can probably see how this confuses people. So you also want to learn the pattern that when you have a numerator and a denominator that are equal to each other, that means I have three out of the three parts, which means I have the whole thing. Okay? Um, I could do any number. I could say I have 11 out of 11 parts, which means I have the whole thing. If I had a pizza and I cut it into 12 slices and I still have 12 slices, I have the whole pizza. If I have a pie and I cut it into eight slices and I still have eight slices, it means I still have the whole pie. That's what that means. Okay, so we just kind of have to get comfortable with this and understand it. Have a wonderful day, boys and girls. Bye-bye.